Hey everybody. I had a request from uh, someone in comments on the channel about cruise control diagnostics. And it happened that I needed to do a little cruise control diagnostic of my own. And um, so I thought I'd walk through this. Now, let me preface this by saying cruise control is a safety related system. If it works incorrectly, if you do things incorrectly and, and setting up um, throttle linkage and so forth, uh, there are some risks, you know, that the throttle might not come back to idle and so forth. So you need to, you know, follow the rules in the owner's manual and in the service manual and, and the cautions and, and be, you know, um, be careful, be safe. Um, secondly, this is a 1985 IROC Camaro. And, and each model year of Camaro in, is, is possibly a little different. As I was looking for parts, for example, um, the, the turn signal stock where the switches are, um, I think it said, the one I was looking up said I think 84 to 90. So, you know, I, I'm going to tell you what my 85 looks like, um, but you need to check some of those things out. I'll show you the service manual and what I've been looking at and where the parts are and uh, we'll go from there. All right, on, on these Camaros, on you know, this being again 1985, uh, most of them uh, run a similar cruise control system but they're not, not always identical so you just need to be careful. Uh, we're going to start with you know, you've got a multi-function lever on the steering column and the cruise control switches are in the end. And there's a wire, a cable that runs down through the steering column that I'll, I can show you in a minute. Um, and this page is mostly instructions. And if you had a Berlinetta model, those had a lot more um, electronics in them. I don't understand everything in a Berlinetta but its cruise system is slightly different because it's got rocker switches on the wheel instead of on the um, instead of on the turn signal stock so your system has an electronic module up under the dash on the passenger side near the ECM it has a servo that is vacuum powered and it has a vent valve, it has, let's see, um, it has a solenoid valve, it has a vent valve, it has a um, position sensor so it knows where it is and a place where the throttle, atta uh, throttle cable or throttle system attaches. So, so number five is the vent solenoid and valve, then number two is the vacuum solenoid and valve. There's a steel core that runs back and forth inside a coil here and that's what feeds that electronic module a signal to uh, let it know that you've uh, you know, achieved the throttle position that the controller wants you to get to. So this servo has a vacuum diaphragm and it's just you put vacuum on it and it will want to pull on the, on the chain or on the cable and when the vacuum diminishes it wants to go the other way. There's a closed loop basically between the controller and the position sensor. In other words, you're going to set a speed and the controller is going to know what that set speed is and it's going to move the throttle back and forth to try to maintain that speed and it, this is its feedback so that it knows how far it's pulling the throttle. It also needs to know what your speed is and so there's a vehicle speed sensor in in these cars in my car it has a mechanical speedometer so the vehicle speed sensor is up in the up in the cluster up and it picks up a speed signal out of the cluster from the idea that the speed sensor is um, is up in the head there's an optical pickup that picks up off of the speedometer cable Here's one that's, uh, this is the Berlinetta, it's got a gear straight to an electronic um, and later on all the cars went to some kind of a direct electronic. 
I can't tell you exactly when, but you need this speed signal and this speed signal in my car is in the cluster and it feeds both the ECM and the cruise control because the ECM needs to know how fast you're going to engage cruise control or it needs to know how fast you're going in order to engage the converter clutch and, and other systems. So then you have a vacuum supply there's a tank down underneath the fender and again I'll show you that in a minute um, there are switches on the brake pedal and on the clutch pedal if you have a, have a, a manual transmission there's an electric switch that uh, uh, it disables the system in other words if you step on the brake the switch will tell the cruise control module to shut off and there's also a vacuum switch that will dump the vacuum out of that servo and quickly get you back to idle and use the diagnostics you know if you have cruise control that's not working right I'll say the first things to look at are vacuum hoses and vacuum fittings at the servo uh, you know this whole thing works on vacuum so if you have a vacuum leak if you have a deteriorated hose and it's leaking vacuum the system won't work uh, disconnected or damaged wiring um, a check valve in the accumulator or servo line uh, the system is supposed to store vacuum and have a check valve so that when you stomp on the throttle the vacuum doesn't all go away and don't want variations in vacuum here there's a special one that says to avoid breaking the vacuum ports be careful removing vacuum hoses from fittings and sometimes you may need to cut the hose if it's totally inoperative they've got a servo resistance measurement you can do the preliminary inspection you can disconnect the cable you can apply vacuum to the servo port and there's a, a set of tests that you can run you can check electrical for the nature of this morning you know some of this you probably need the service manual and you need to go through uh, individually but here's one that's a voltage set of voltage checks at the electronic module Here's resistance check if you disconnect the electronic module. This one is, this is the wiring diagram of the whole system. So here's your control module. Here are your switches. Resume Excel, set and coast. And here's your servo. And in the servo, you've got a vacuum. There's your vent valve, your vacuum valve. They're just solenoid valves. And then a variable position sensor. Here's your speed signal that comes up. There's a set of checks that you can make. If you take the servo out and disconnect it, you can measure the resistance of the coils on, on the valves and the speed sensor, and there's a specified resistance that you need to hit. And here are the specific tests that you can do on the servo. Now this one is the one that I'm going, to, I'm going to start with an opinion. The opinion of mine is, number one, check the adjustment of the brake switch and the brake um, vacuum switch. Because if those are misadjusted, your system won't work. Second, is this is um, what I'll call the truth table for your switch. So you have a set of switches there in the turn signal stock and this is for each position um, is it open or closed and you can check it with you know digital voltmeter digital volt ohm meter when you disconnect the cable this is the layout of the terminals you can see the notch here here's the layout of the terminals now this is a real bear to do you almost need two people or three people because you got terminals on the top, terminals on the bottom. You need to touch meter probes to those while this pigtail hangs in the air and you need to push the switch and see what happens. Now, if you happen to have a Berlinetta, they've got a whole different set and, um, of measurements that you would need to take. When you get up underneath the dash, um, I'll, again, I'm going to try to show you this, but 
you have switches so this one's for a manual transmission this one's for an automatic but you have a stop lamp and cruise control switch so your brake lights would also be affected if this switch was not working right and then you've got one that's a TCC torque converter release switch and vacuum valve so there are two of them and per the instructions you push these in um, it's kind of like a two-way ratchet I mean they click they click as they go in and they click as they come out but you're supposed to push them in until they seat and then pull the brake pedal back until it hits its stop and it'll push those switches back and put them in the correct position now I'll tell you this can be subtle because they um, I'll give you a story at one time I had a brand new General Motors company car I mean zero miles and I drove it for a few days and I noticed that it I could feel that the uh, torque converter clutch wasn't coming in over the next couple of days I was doing a lot of highway driving and then I noticed that the not only was the torque converter clutch not coming in but it wouldn't go into high gear anymore and things were deteriorating pretty quickly and I you know I worked for the company I talked to my transmission friends and gave them my symptoms and they said "Ooh, bad you need a new transmission uh, get it to the service garage and we'll get your transmission well when I got to the service garage I didn't need a new transmission uh, they did some checks and uh, this was an OBD2 car the diagnostics weren't f turning on a light there were diagnostics that were hidden but these switches on the brake pedal were not set correctly in the factory and because the cruise control brake light switches and so forth the TCC switches weren't set right it was going into default modes and it was the torque converter clutch didn't work because its switch was maladjusted after that went for a period of time the transmission said oh the TCC the torque converter clutch isn't working I need to protect the transmission and not let it go into high gear and so things can cascade over something as simple as one of these switches being off so just something to think about so in any case um, you've got two switches there if you go into a manual transmission you've got one over here on the clutch pedal as well and these have both vacuum and electrical signals going to them if you do have to go pull the lever out and replace it uh, the wire gets fished down through the steering column and you actually have to pull they say use music wire but you need a really stiff piece of wire on that um, cable so that when you pull the switch out you run that you run the wire through the column so that you can hook it to the new switch and pull it back down because uh, it's going to be a real bear you can see where that cable goes here in through the column and down through this hole um, you don't want to just pull that out and pull the wire without bringing something a fish wire to take it back the other way um, underneath here you'll see um, this is the instrument panel on the passenger side you can see where it says front here and the, the cruise module mounts up underneath uh, near the ECM and if you have a Berlinetta well then they put it on the hole over on the other side of the car you see there it says front it mounts on the left hand side so it's an even totally different animal and then these are the different mounting points um, for the servo and the way the cables hook up you really need to find the adjustment process for your particular engine and make sure that that cable adjustments are correct now for mine you know, I've got the LB9 you know tuned port and it, it has you know a fairly strong set of instructions but in the end it wants one millimeter between the slot uh, the stud and the end of the slot um, and that seems to be a consistent theme uh, I've never had to actually adjust these when they come from the factory you know there is if you don't mess with things they generally are the same but uh, parts wear cables wear and it's worth rechecking so on this engine this is your cruise here 
and they want clearance, a millimeter of clearance here at the end. Because if you set this cable too tight, you'll hold the throttle open and it won't come all the way back to idle. So you need to follow those instructions carefully. So you can see, here's the servo system. And you got your vacuum hoses. Here's one, here's the other. And then, if you follow that vacuum hose, this is like the feed hose. And there's a T. And it comes down to the bottom, and it's really kind of hard to see. But down underneath, behind the horns, this hose goes down underneath. And you can't see it, but down underneath there's uh, something about the size of a softball, which is the vacuum tank that holds vacuum in here. And somewhere along the line, there's a check valve. I'm not certain, but that's probably it right there. And then the vacuum source comes off of your intake manifold, or off of your intake plenum. So if you had to adjust the cable, the adjustment is here, and there is a process for, um, for adjusting that. These, these in this vintage, uh, some of them have a bead chain, as time goes on, some of them have a have a cable that goes to slots. You just need to you need to check for your own application very um, carefully. This one is supposed to have a bead chain, and and you'll see it, you know, right in here. And you and the, you can not only make an adjustment, but you can change the length the length of the uh, chain by what bead is connected. And here's a picture of that tank under here. If you want to get to your switches you have to remove this panel that is underneath you know underneath the dash here. Call the hush panel and the closeout for the steering column which is in here. And then what you'll find is for really hard to get you a good picture so you can see this big hose here that comes that that goes out to the cruise control and then above the top of this wiring harness okay so right here you see your two switches that go out to the go out to the brake pedal And they've got adjustment collars. That's where those guys go. And there are instructions in the manual for how to check for voltage and make sure that your switch isn't bad. Then the next one is, I have this one apart already, but this is the connector for the cruise control. This one comes down out of the steering column and it connects here. So then this is your cruise control connector and it has terminals on the top side and on the bottom side and they're numbered and, and those are for the switches that come from here and go on down. And frankly, the reason I'm into this is my system has been working, but the resume Excel feature hasn't been working. I could set it, it'll hold, but if I hit Excel or resume, it, does, it doesn't. And it's difficult to show you everything here right now, but um, see, the challenge is that you, you need to hold two meter probes on two parts of this system at one time. And then you need to push the switch. Now I've been doing that, um, and it appears to me that in my case, the the on switch is is faulty, and it it um, it seems to be losing contact when you push it all the way over. Yet when you release it, it'll come back to its set point and hold its set point. So I may very well need to come in here and replace this stock. Uh, right now it's working. 
we'll see when the weather gets nice and I get it back out on the road uh, how that goes. But, um, but I can tell from measuring resistance on the on position that that, that one's been not quite right. So then if you were going to put this back together, then, then that connector snaps into that connector when you're all done doing diagnostics. If you're looking for the cruise control module, you need to go over to the right hand side, the passenger side, and pull its hush panel down. And you should find it up in there. My, my memory is it's attached off the same bracket with the ECM, but it's been a while since I've been up in there. So to my comments about switches, I'm going to come back again, is, you know, when I'm trying to do resume Excel, this one says normal position, resume Excel, if I push that, I should be able to pick up 1 and 2 should close, 1 and 4 should be closed, and 2 and 4 should be closed. So the top of that is 4, the top of that is 2, so 2 and 4 with your meter probes should show continuity or closed. And it just takes a lot of hands to do that all at once. So that's kind of a starting point. And I started to say earlier, I would make sure that the switches are adjusted correctly underneath. I would make, it's kind of in, 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 in process, right? Depends on what's the matter. If the system doesn't work at all, then you start with, you know, vacuum, are my switches right? Is the servo working? If it does that and it's inaccurate, I mean, you also could lose your speed signal, but then other things like in your engine controller wouldn't probably work correctly either. Uh, you can go over and make the measurements over at the electronic control module and see whether, you know, everything checks out there. Pull that module down and, and get the readings. I'm going to go back to the book here one more time. Just a reminder, you know, preliminary inspection, which is to check your wiring and your switches and your vacuum hoses. Make sure those are good. If it's inoperative, you know, the, the voltage and uh, resistance checks. One thing is there, there are several cruise control check boxes that you can take out the controller and put in the box. And, but those things are pretty expensive for us as do-it-yourselfers and running the individual resistance tests it takes longer but it's a lot cheaper. So here's a couple more things. If the system surges, make sure that your throttle linkage and your servo that everything is operating smoothly, that your speedometer cable is not dry or actually excessively greased. Um, typically I would say dry cable. Uh, if the speedometer is not, if it's smooth and not jittering and jumping, it's probably not an issue. But that could be a problem which may cause you some uh, cause you some issues. Now it says high voltage spikes on the B plus line um, that would seem to be electrical system 12 volt problems. Hose routing for vacuum hose routing goes back to the servo test. If you don't have if you don't find any other problems replace the module. Set point, again, is vacuum hoses, uh, servo linkage for excess slack, wrong module. If you don't find anything else wrong, replace the module. That seems to be the answer, which is do all the tests that you can, and, and if it still doesn't function properly, you ha may have a problem with the module. Speed loss. Mm, rec recognize uh, the word is excessive speed loss. You can check 
again, it's for vacuum and make sure you have a right, have enough vacuum in the system. But most of these cruise systems didn't hold precisely on speed and depended on your engine, but when you're on a grade, you're going to lose some speed. And so the question is how much is normal and how much is not, you know, not right. And then we'll go down and talk about so those are the basic things to look at. You know, consider that you really want to make sure you have vacuum to the servo and the servo's working and that your, your switches are good. You can, you can go through and do the electrical checks, the resistance checks that the service manual has. Uh, and if all else fails, change the module seems to be the answer. Uh, but before you get to the module, you know, you can look at the service manual and do those individual tests. You know, make sure that your that your make sure that your simple things are correct, that you have enough vacuum, that your hoses are in good condition, that they're hooked up properly to the intake manifold and you got a good, you know, good flow through them. And you can do some of that by um, you know, get a vacuum gauge and take the hose off and put it in the end and run the engine and see if you pull on vacuum. Uh, there's a sequence in there for, you know, testing the servo on the bench. Um, beyond that, you probably need to get your own manual and go in deeper. But I know I'm repeating myself a little, but common stuff. Brake switches, turn signal stock. The switches in the in there seem to um, sometimes have issues. I, I say, you know, my car sat for years and the switches are a little bit flaky, and uh, it's not an unusual thing. The servo, again, it's solenoids and vacuum. Do the, do the solenoids work? Are the resistance correct? Is your vacuum source good? If you go over to the to the controller and you bring the cruise control controller down, are the voltages right at the terminals? If you disconnect it, are the resistance signals right? And some of these you may need a second pair, or third, even a third pair of hands to do things. But you ought to be able to walk through and see what it takes to make it work. I hope that's help, helpful to you. And that's all for now.